Lord Church, um, let's all join us in prayer together on this wonderful Christmas uh, Sunday. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, O oh Heavenly Father. God, we, we worship today today on your birthday, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord God, I pray that you take these prayers into need, Lord God. Lord God, we come to you asking you for more today, O oh Heavenly Father. God, we want your spirit to arise in this heavenly place, Lord God. Anoint these four walls, Lord God, for visitors to come, Lord God. I pray that all spirits be, be bounded to hell, Lord God, that your mercy, that your love, everlasting Father, reign upon us today, oh God. Oh, we thank you, oh Heavenly Father. God, I pray for all those needs, Lord God, all the physical, all the spiritual, Lord God, because we know you can overcome. Nothing is impossible with you, oh great Lord. Lord God, you men who was once broken. You heal what was once poison, oh great God. Oh, we love you, Jesus, and we thank you, oh great God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. God, we worship you, Lord, for these last 30 seconds. God, you hear our prayer. You hear our prayers. You hear our cries, Lord. They call out to you, Jesus, as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That was the Alpha and Omega. That what is here forever will always be, oh great God, is your word is everlasting. Hallelujah.
Christmas, everybody. It sure feels good in here. You can find your way back to your seats. And why don't you shake somebody's hand and tell them Merry Christmas on the way to your seat. It certainly is very special to be here with you today. Christmas doesn't always fall on a Sunday. But I'm here today, and I can genuinely say that I'm happy that it does. Because you don't always get to see all of your family on Christmas. That's one of the things that can be a little bit challenging. You want to spend time with everyone. You want to see everyone. But I'm very thankful that I get to see and be with my Rushing Wind family today. That brings me joy. It brings me joy. Uh, I know that it can be a little bit stressful sometimes if you have kids or... Um, it, you know, it's a busy morning. It's Christmas morning. It's not what you traditionally do. You may be seated. It's not what you traditionally do on Christmas morning. But I can honestly say I'm down here. I'm listening to the worship. I'm, I'm focusing my mind. I'm, I'm feeling the presence of God, and I'm grateful to be here with you today. I have a couple of quick reminders on this Christmas day. Um, very briefly, if you wouldn't mind just silencing your phones for the remainder of the service, just take a moment, put that phone on, on silent. Um, what an incredible thing to be here. What an incredible thing to be celebrating today. Um, we remember the birth of Christ. And of course, with the birth of Christ, you just begin to think of the goodness of God in your own life. A lot of us have had new birth in our life at some point, and for some of us, maybe it was this year. Um, you can't help but be grateful. And when you take a moment to reflect on, on the birth of Christ, the true meaning of Christmas, you can't help but think of uh, Easter, really, and the cross, and what that means for us, and what that means uh, in each and every one of our lives, there was a new covenant formed. And it was birthed that day, but it was felt a few decades later, really, on that cross. And what happened on that cross is the reason why we're still here today. And I know it's Christmas. I have a couple of announcements to get through, and we're going to be really fast. But I just want to remind somebody if it's somebody who's watching online or if it's somebody here today, that God can do a completely new thing in your life. He can completely turn your life around. You may be facing a problem or a situation in your life that truly feels hopeless. But when you dive into this Christmas story, it's all about hope and grace and compassion and a loving God who loves you so much that he would step down from heaven, be wrapped in flesh, live a hard life on this earth, and then die for you so that you can have life more abundantly. And so I just want to remind somebody today, encourage you. If you're here and you're looking for encourage, encouragement, be encouraged in the Lord because he's got something incredible for your life coming into this new year and here today. Um, for our reminders... HYC hyphen um, uh, holiday youth and hyphen convention for our youth and hyphen and our parents uh, remember that that's going to be held this coming week December 28th through the 31st um, a few more details about uh, drop off pick up things like that will be sent out tomorrow but we're meeting Wednesday at 10 a.m. and then we're
we're heading out from there. Um, and if, of course, we always open up the, uh, or let you know that even though it's Christmas, if you have not been baptized yet in the saving name of Jesus Christ, then the baptism still works even on Christmas Day. It still works. There's no greater, I think there's no greater Christmas memory that you can have than being baptized in Jesus' name on Christmas Day. So if there's anybody who would like to be, I think, first in rushing wind history, I'm trying to entice you here. I'm trying to encourage you. First in rushing wind history to be baptized on Christmas Day. We would love to make that happen. So if you'd stand with me right now, we're going to go into another form of worship before we move on in our service. And that is uh, the form of worship in giving. If you'd like to give an offering today, there's a few ways you can do it. You can give it through Zelle, rushingwindchurch1 at gmail.com on Zelle. You can give um, in the back with card. You can give up front with cash or check. You can give on the Tithely app or you can give on our website. Uh, and that is Rushing Wind Church. Rushing Wind Church. Oh, man. Look at me. Once again, help build the website. And I can't remember the website. Here. Rushingwindupc.org slash give. Thank you very much, Brother Brand, for all that you do, media team, for saving the day. <laughs> Why don't you bow your heads with me right now before we come and give? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this day, Lord God. We thank you for what this day means to us, each and every one of us. Thank you so much for your goodness over this year, Lord God. And we pray that you would continue to have your way in this church, in this people for this coming year, Lord God. Do your mightiest work this year, God. I pray that we would rearrange ourselves, Lord Jesus, so that you can work and flow through our lives, Lord Jesus. We pray for this offering, God. Use it to further your kingdom here in Jesus' name. You can come and give right now. very special in the house of God today, doesn't it? Turn to your neighbor, turn to somebody near you and just tell them you look amazing today. Thank you. <laughs> you may be seated. Um, I said it feels special in here today because um, it just it just does. There's something about a Christmas time, Christmas day in the house of God. My son mentioned it a little bit, but it's just a little more intimate. And um, we've been with people that we love, and there's a special, always a special feeling in the air at Christmas time. And uh, for a moment, if you will, just take out just just a moment, and. Um, Hopefully you've taken a little bit longer than that, but just to really think about what it must have been like uh, those many, many years ago. Um, we sing about it, and we talk about it, and we recognize it, but what it was really like the night that he was born. And um, I have thought about it a lot, and, I've, I've, and it always brings tears to my eyes, and uh, just the gift that was given to mankind that night that changed the world and changed, changed destiny, changed our lives forever. And I'm so grateful for that. And along with the things that I'm very grateful for is uh, special surprises at Christmas time. How many of you have had 
um, a special surprise happen to you, somebody or something or a word from someone, a card from someone, just out of the blue, you know, it brings out usually the best in people and the thoughtfulness that there is. But we had very special surprise um, this weekend. Last night we gathered with our family and my children, their spouses and fiance and Anna, and and we had a very special, special surprise. And one of those surprises is Nani is with us. And yeah, this is my, <laughs> my, actually Nani is my dad's sister. And so she's really my aunt, but she's really Nani. So she takes on uh, a different roles um, and different titles. And my, my kids and I are just so blessed and my husband to have her with us this Christmas, I mean, it means the world to us. And really, it's we were looking forward to it. And she's been with us several days. And um, and it's good to have her here, isn't it, church? We've had her here before, but it's been a while. And, um, and we're just so grateful, Nani, that you are here with us today. And I, I've talked about this before, but this woman is um, has been such a... a, a a shelter and a stability in my life and uh, the many many things you know life puts you through the rinker sometimes and uh, and it's part of life the ups the downs the joys and the and the valleys we walk through but she's always been by my side and she's walked through every one of my high times and my low times right alongside me she's been a great support to me to my family she loves my children so much um, and that means the world to me. And I'm just so grateful to have her with us today. And also, a very special surprise, my husband's father and his wife are with us. for There they are. I was looking for you through the... Yeah, they're right over here. And you talk about a special surprise. You know, I don't care how old you get. There's something about having your dad with you. And, uh, and they came in yesterday, and it was cute because I could see my husband just light up. And I know he was happy to have his father with him. And so we're grateful to have you with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us. Very grateful. And I'm going to try to sing a song. <laughs> so um, it was hard, though, because, you know, you're going through and... Sister Kaylee's asked me if I could sing a Christmas special, and you know me, I'm not going to pick out anything <laughs> real chirpy or jolly because it it Christmas time moves me, and so of course I start heading toward the bluegrass. So I know some of you have no idea <laughs> what that even is or what it means, but you're going to get a little bit of it this morning as I sing. So if you would worship the Lord with me. Beat 
this tends and we There were no midwives to be found on the streets of David's town in the middle of the night. So we held her and he prayed. Shafts of moonlight on his. Clap your hands to the Lord. Praise God. She's still the goat in my opinion. <laughs> she doesn't sing very much around here anymore, but she's still got it. Amen. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. We love you so much. We are so honored to be here today. It's so honored. I want to echo some of the sentiments that my wife had mentioned regarding uh, Nani. She's also, for years, she was also our pastor's wife. I mean, she didn't mention that, but she was our pastor's wife, along with Aunt and many, many other roles that she filled. And for so many years, she was a symbol of strength. She was a symbol of what living for God looked like. A leading lady, hand to the plow, and just, there's so many roles that you have to fill when you do that. And she did them all so graciously and so willingly. And we want to thank her for that. We were at home last night. We read the Christmas story and uh, we're just everybody testifies of their year and how it is. And I started off, usually I, I go last. So I went first this time. And um, as I began to hear people testifying about uh, certain things, they were Men mentioning some qualities maybe that I have that I represent to them, which is which is not rare, and um, um, being consistent and being stable and being representing these things that are so needful in a day like today. And I couldn't help but to think after everybody was through, I just basically mentioned that everything that I am was. A product of what they did her and her husband our pastor and uh, I'm so grateful today that I had the hands of the potter they 
they represented Jesus to me on this earth. We don't see Jesus. We feel him, we preach about him, but they were the Jesus that I saw. And uh, I'm so thankful for you. So awesome to have my dad with me today. Always a pleasure to have him in church, him and his wonderful wife, Esther. And uh, we always have fun. We just pick up where we left off. We laugh and we talk about all, all of our crazy family and just like your crazy family. And uh, we just really, really been enjoy one another when we're able to spend time. Amen. I want to uh, talk to you today. I'm, I'm not going to hold you long. My Is it already 1106? Okay, so I'm... I'm going to be up here for maybe 15 minutes. I'm going to keep my word and say we're going to be out of here in an hour. Amen. You could be seated in Jesus' name. As I was reading in Acts about two, two months ago, I came across the scripture in Acts chapter number 7. The scripture was about the stoning of Stephen and the price that was paid. Um... Paul, obviously, was Saul at that time, had to consent to the death of Stephen. <clears throat> and when you think about what God spent in order to save one of the most valuable people in the Bible, Saul, what, what just happened? Something just happened. I just lost my monitor or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, so when you think about what happened, I want to speak to you today about God's currency for salvation. God's currency for salvation. When God is spending, God is buying. What does God use as currency? We get a glimpse of that in Acts chapter number 7 at the death of Stephen. If you think about it and you think about where we're all going to go at one point, it's every one of our goal in this room to make heaven. That is the goal. That's why we're here. I want to see Jesus one day. But think about this. When you think about Acts chapter number seven, you think about the story that's happening here. You have a man by the name of Saul that consented to an evangelist's death by the name of Stephen. We all know that Stephen will be in heaven when we get there, but we also know that Saul turned Paul will also be there. Can you imagine what's going to happen when Stephen runs into Saul? Have you ever thought about that? What's going to happen when this, this man that consented, he's probably going to say, how on earth did you get here? The last time I saw you was at my debt. The last time I saw you, you were consenting to people gnashing on me with their teeth. I watched you destroy the only thing that I ever lived for. This probably is going to be a little of the conversation between Saul, Paul, and Stephen. But I can see Paul speaking to them, to him, and saying, after that afternoon, I was never the same again. Stephen, you bought me. God bought me with you. You gave your life that I might live. Stephen, I wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that, that we left. I, I instituted and I wrote church order. I left letters. I wrote letters from prison. I would suffer many things. And when Paul got a little older, he would write these words. He said, I am ready to spend and be spent. Spend me. I can see Saul telling God, spend me since you spent somebody else in order to win me. Spend me. Spend me to buy someone else. And when 
God, the God of all eternity, robed himself in human flesh, as the word of the Lord would say, became Emmanuel, God with us. He would spend a man to purchase our salvation. In God's economy, he doesn't spend money and houses and cars and things like that. God spends people. God spends people like my pastor and his wife that would strap up week in and week out and give and pour out to the family of God. God spends people. And God would send us the, the King of King and the Lord of Lords, the God man from heaven. And God would show us God would spend people, but he would be the living example. God would show us through his own flesh in his son, Jesus Christ. He would model it out for us. He came to us. The scripture says, and she shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. She will Bear a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Thus we have the birth of the currency of God. Unimaginable. Unthinkable. The incomparable Christ. There was a poem written or... Uh, I don't know who wrote it, but it's, it's a awesome tale or a poem, and it's simply stated the incomparable Christ. And this is the currency of God, the man Christ Jesus. People, God spends people. The incomparable Christ goes a little something like this. More than 2,000 years ago, there was a man born contrary to the laws of nature. He lay aside his purple robe for a peasant's tunic. He was rich, yet for our sake he became poor. The man lived in poverty and was raised in obscurity. He received no formal education, never possessed wealth or widespread influence. He never traveled extensively. He seldom crossed the boundary of the country in which he lived. But this man's life changed the course of history. In infancy, he startled a king. In childhood, he amazed religious scholars. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature, walked on the stormy waves, and hushed the raging sea to sleep. This was the incomparable Christ. Healed the multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never practiced psychiatry, yet he healed more broken hearts and all the doctors far and near. This was the incomparable Christ. He never wrote a book, yet his life has inspired more books than any other man. He never wrote a song, yet has furnished the theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a college, but all the schools put together cannot boast of having as many students. This is the incomparable Christ. He never marshaled an army. He never drafted a soldier or fired a gun, yet no leader ever had more rebels surrender to him without shots fired. This is the incomparable Christ. Herod couldn't kill him. Satan couldn't seduce him. His enemies could not destroy him. The grave could not hold him. After three days, he rose from the dead alive forevermore. This is the incomparable Christ. He is the ever perfect one. He is the Christ, the son of the living God. The man stands forth upon the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory, proclaimed by God, acknowledged by angels, adored by his people, and feared by every demon, and risen the Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, and this is the incomparable Christ. Let me tell somebody this Sunday morning, there's no God like our God. There's no God is powerful. Is our, our God is an incomparable, unthinkable, unimaginable Savior. 
This is the incomparable Christ. And so in a season, in a season where people celebrate crazy things and you can just hop on any social media outlet and see the raging idiots that are out there after a couple glasses of wine or whatever they do to celebrate. Now, I'm, I'm all for celebrating the season. And if, if you still believe in Santa Claus, God bless you because he's real. <laughs> but I'm going to end it with something a little bit lighter. Are you thankful you're serving Jesus this morning? I'm thankful I'm serving the Lord. But I, I want to give you a few reasons why Jesus is better than Santa Claus. Yeah, all right? I'm going to give you a couple reasons. Are, are you ready for them? <laughs> Santa lives at the North Pole. Jesus is everywhere. Santa rides a sleigh, but Jesus rides on the wind and walks on the water. <laughs> Santa comes once a year, but Jesus is our ever-present help in the time of trouble. Santa fills your stockings, but Jesus supplies all your needs. Santa comes down the chimney uninvited, but Jesus stands at the door and knocks and then enters into the hearts that, are, that invite him. You have to wait in line to see Santa, but Jesus is as close as the mention of his name. Santa lets you sit on his lap, but Jesus wraps you in his arms. Santa doesn't know your name. All he can say is, hi, little boy, or hi, little girl. But Jesus knew our name before we were ever born. Not only does he know our name, he knows our address, he knows our history, he knows our future, and he knows how many hairs are on our head. There's a couple reasons why Jesus is better than Santa. Santa has belly full of jelly. Jesus has a heart full of love. All Santa can offer is ho, 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 but Jesus offers health, hope, and happiness. <laughs> Jesus says, you better not, or Santa says, you better not cry. Jesus says, cast your cares on me, for I care for you. Santa's little helpers make toys. Jesus makes new life, mends hearts, repairs homes, builds mansions. That's what Jesus does. Santa might make you chuckle, but Jesus gives you the joy that is your strength. While Santa puts gifts under the, the tree, Jesus became our gift and died on a tree. We need to put Jesus back in Christmas. Can you stand with me this morning, clap your hands to the Lord, and let's thank him one more time for being who he is in our life. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I think I just set a new world record. Amen. We, we want you to know that we love you so much. We, we really do. Our hearts... Are, are so filled today and our, our spirits are so overjoyed to know that we can come and assemble with the fam our family, our family of God, but, but you are our family. You are each, each and every one of you and even those that weren't able to make it today. We understand. We want you to know and we want you to have the most merry Christmas that you can have. Go home, read the Christmas story eat a lot of tamales do whatever you do best amen and god bless you in jesus name we'll see you next week next sunday